In no particular order, the first postulate we'll cover is the concept of observables and operators. First of all, what is an observable? Well, an observable is really just a physical parameter, something that you're probably used to seeing from an introductory physics course. For example, we've got several here of the common ones, momentum, kinetic energy, position, potential energy, total energy, angular momentum, and so on and so forth. Okay, And classically speaking, when we had a very large macroscopic body, these were easy to measure. For example, if we wanted to find the kinetic energy of a body moving through space, we would just take its mass, multiply by its velocity squared, and divide by 2, 1 half mv squared. And it turns out that we can actually use these same physical parameters for quantum mechanical particles, but we do it in a very different way. So every one of these observables, things that you could actually measure in quantum mechanics, has what we call a corresponding operator. However, when we actually do these measurements on the quantum scale, we can never know the exact value of these parameters precisely. That's actually going into the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which we covered in a previous video. There's always going to be uncertainty, say, in the position and the momentum, which we can never know exactly simultaneously. And so to determine the possible values for these observables, we have to use what's called an operator. And every observable in quantum mechanics has a corresponding operator. For example, momentums, a linear momentums operator, is going to be negative i h bar times the first derivative with respect to x. So basically, what an operator does is it performs some mathematical operation on a function. And that function we'll see in another video is going to turn out to be the wave function. So kinetic energies operator, if you wanted to determine its possible value, would be negative h bar squared over 2m times the second derivative with respect to x. Okay, And it turns out that what we would normally do when we actually get into problems is we would use these operators on a wave function and then we would integrate it. Okay, And that would actually help us determine what are called expectation values, which means we expect the momentum to be on average this. Or if we used the let's say the angular momentum operator, we would expect the angular momentum on average to be this value. Okay, And we would use these operators to do that. And to give you some more insight on what an operator actually is, you've actually seen some forms of operators, most likely if you're in physical chemistry by now, you've seen them before. Now, generally speaking, operators are denoted by some letter, normally. Um, for example, if we're talking about momentum, momentum is usually P, and they put this little hat symbol above it. Now, O is the general symbol, just for operator, so it's O hat. So let's define an operator, 1. Our first operator is going to be P. Okay. So P, when you see this, is corresponding to negative log base 10. So let's suppose we have a function, h of x. Let's say that function is the proton concentration. So if we said, let's operate, use this first operator on h of x. Well, the operator is, which is p, is negative log base 10. The function is the hydrogen ion concentration. And so the negative log base 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration is your pH which you've used over and over again in other courses. So when you see something like this, the H is obviously your hydrogen ion concentration, but the P is an operator. It's telling you whatever is over here to take its negative log base 10. For example, if you replace this with OH, it would say take the negative log base 10 of the hydroxide ion concentration. You can do this with anything. We could do the iodide anion concentration. So it'd be PI would be the negative log of the iodide ion concentration, and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, now, other operators, common ones that we'll see, are actually derivatives. Um, you can see up here that we have several derivatives. We have momentum, which is a first derivative. Kinetic energy is a second derivative. And then all the angular momentums are going to involve first order partial derivatives. Okay. So let's define a second operator to get some more practice with this, as operator 2 is going to be the first derivative with respect to x. So I'm now going to define a function f of x. Let's say it's 4 times x to the fifth. So if I apply operator 2 to f of x, that means we're going to be taking the first derivative of that function 4x to the fifth, 
and that's just a power rule derivative, so we would get 20x to the fourth. So that's really all the operator does. You put the operator physically in front of a function, and it tells you to do whatever that operation is on the function. So for example, if I wanted to use the px hat operator, I would put px hat in front of the function, and that would tell me to multiply the function times negative i h bar and then take its first derivative with respect to x. Okay, And when we actually compute expectation values, we'll actually get some practice with that. Okay, So hopefully this gives you a little bit of insight on observables and operators. Join us in the next video where we talk about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Thank you.